Hi, I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we talk about gene health, gut health, and hormone health. And today we're going to focus on the connection between our genes and our hormones. In particular, we're going to focus on something called COMT, which is uh, stands for catechol-O-methylene transferase. Methyl transferase. Um, so it's COMT. And what COMT has to do with our hormones is it helps us to process not only norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine, and adrenaline hormones, but also estrogen, helps us process those and break them down and move them along the pathway. So if we have a defect or polymorphism in our COMT gene, oftentimes it's, it's known as the um, MET-MET or the minus-minus uh, formation or um, version of our COMT gene, then we can have process our problems processing our adrenaline hormones and like dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and then also estrogen. So we don't want a buildup of estrogen. We don't want estrogen dominance. And we're talking about estrogen dominance here today and, and its impact with the COMT gene. Um, estrogen dominance is basically when we have too much estrogen, and that can then take over and uh, lower our progesterone. It can cause havoc with our cycles and moods. And then also, if you have the COMT polymorphism factoring into that, then you don't have the dopamine and norepinephrine and epinephrine being processed well, and that kind of compounds with the estrogen, and we really get the effect on our moods and our anxiety levels and our nervousness. So that leads to oftentimes when you have a COMT um, polymorphism, the minus minus, it's called the worrier um, version of this gene, whereas the plus plus is the um, val val and it's the plus plus, and that would be the warrior. So there's benefits to either. Um, warrior, you know, it's known to, uh, to, you're known to be better with stress and just kind of pushing through, but also your attention span and concentration um, is not that great. So studies with the warrior version or the minus minus, they um, tend to do better on uh, concentration and memory skills than the warrior would. But then the warrior also has the worry aspect where they can have more panic, anxiety, fear, and then also have that buildup of the estrogen, so have problems with their um, menstrual cycles and that kind of thing. So COMT can factor into estrogen dominance. And so when we have less of ability to process estrogen, then we have that estrogen building up. The interesting thing is when the estrogen builds up, then it can further impair your ability to process. So it creates a vicious cycle with the COMT. So we really want to optimize our estrogen metabolism so that we don't have this buildup. So even if you have this gene polymorphism, it's not like a sentence that you're going to have to have estrogen dominance the rest of your life. You can manipulate it. That's what epigenetics is. You can eat enough protein. You can uh, make sure you get enough B12, folate, zinc, even sometimes B6, um, magnesium, and make sure the whole methylation pathway in your genes works well. And then you can um, get the estrogen processed and moving better. So then it, this gene defect can be a bit of, or variation, I should say, not defect, can be more of a just kind of a difference in a personality trait rather than um, resulting in true like health consequences. So you can optimize. And that's what the whole field of epigenetics is about. It's about how our environment plays into our genes. So we're going to talk about this even further um, with regards to estrogen. Like I said, the more estrogen that builds up, the slower this enzyme goes. So we're going to talk about how we avoid kind of this estrogen dominance phase we can um, or if state. We can ha make sure we get enough of those things I mentioned before, the magnesium, the protein, the B6, B12, zinc, and um, folate. And then also we can avoid things that are going to further impair our estrogen. And that would be things called xenoestrogens. So these are things that can mimic our estrogen. And in my last video, no, the first video, where I talked about um, the natural solutions to thyroid disease, we talked about plastics and how that can impair our thyroid function. And the way that those can do that is they can act like hormones. So there are xenoestrogens in plastics in things with BPA in them, maybe even in plastics that don't have BPA in them. So we want to avoid drinking out of plastic. So our coffee cups um, or tea or whatever we might get from Starbucks or any kind of 
store that has the plastic lid. Let's try to get that out of our system. Try to avoid water bottles that are plastic, you know, uh, hopefully avoid soda in general, but anything, um, drinking out of plastic, eating off plastic utensils. Um, so when we get also our food at the store, is it stored in plastic? If it is, bring it home, change it into a glass container, change all your storage food containers into glass containers. And that way we can get some of these xenoestrogens out of our system and therefore avoid any kind of external sources that could contribute to estrogen dominance. We can filter our water like I talked about in the thyroid video, and I'll put a link to that video um, down below. But the, uh, the water, the things in our water can, um, there can be estrogen in our water from medications that are in our water supply um, and just from hormones that are given to animals and that kind of thing. So we want to filter our water. Also, some of the other ingredients in water can act like xenoestrogen. So we also want to eat clean food that doesn't have pesticides in it that can alter our hormones and then avoid animals that have been given hormones. So grass fed, organic meats, if you eat meat. Um, another way to avoid it is to look it into your uh plastics that your beauty products might come in, but also the ingredients in those products like parabens. Avoid parabens altogether. Those are going to uh, act like xenoestrogens. Also, we can uh, make sure that we are eating enough folate. We've talked about folate a lot in this video. So you need folate to methylate and you need to methylate well for this COMT to work well and to process our estrogen. So folate is in leafy greens. Another good vegetable source to eat is brassica vegetables, and those are our cruciferous vegetables, and those have the indole-3-carbinol, which helps us metabolize our estrogen. So that can help things work and move more smoothly too. So that would be broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, cauliflower, asparagus. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting one major one. Remind me if I'm forgetting one major one, but brassica vegetables, cruciferous vegetables can help because of their I3C and because of their effect on the uh, estrogen. So another thing to do is to avoid things with fake folate in them, and that would be folic acid. Folic acid is in some um, supplements, hopefully not some of the better supplements, but even some good brands I've seen it in. So look at your ingredient levels on your multivitamins, on your B-complexes, and sometimes the energizing vitamins or the hair and nail vitamins can have folic acid in them. Look for things that have folate or methylated folate and not folic acid. Keep in mind, our government does put folic acid, and it's for a good reason, but they put it in our processed grains. So we want you to avoid processed grains anyway, but those do have folic acid. And folic acid, the reason we're avoiding it is it can stop that methylation pathway, particularly if you have like an MTHFR defect, which we will have another video on. That's another gene defect. So we don't we have a, a lot of us have MTHFR defects and then we don't process folic acid well and then it builds up and it kind of impairs our methylation. So we want to avoid things that have folic acid in them. Like I talked about in my microbiome and healthy food uh, video, we want to have a lot more fiber in our diet. The fiber can help us take that estrogen and move it from the liver out in a good bowel movement. We want to have a good bowel movement every day and the fiber really helps with that. And the fiber helps us process our estrogen. So try to get enough fiber to shoot for 30 to 35 grams a day of fiber. And then we also want to control histamine. So histamine, the more histamine you have, the more estrogen you can have. And then the more estrogen you have, sometimes the more histamine you have. So that's a vicious cycle too. So if you feel like histamine foods like uh, tomatoes, sometimes leftovers, um, meats, especially leftover meats or lunch meats or alcohol in the form of like wine or any kind of alcohol badly affects you. You may have an issue with histamine. Also, when our gut bacteria are imbalanced, we can have too much histamine and that can lead to too much estrogen. So we can talk more about that in another video about histamine and gut health. But just make sure you look at your microbiome, you think about your food triggers, all of that, because believe it or not, that can impair our estrogen. And then we have this problem with estrogen dominance sometimes. And then um, inflammatory foods, sugars and processed grains. We want to keep those out because the more inflammation we have, then the less uh, smoothly everything gets processed and methylated out. So that's some tips on working on 
COMT, if you, especially if you've done your gene analysis and you know you have a COMT polymorphism, then you can try to do these tips to avoid estrogen dominance because it makes it worse. And then if you have estrogen dominance, you can work on these tips and maybe potentially look into getting your genes checked. So one way we can check genes is 23andMe and then go to a, a trained provider who can help you then take those that raw data and interpret it even better because the report you get from 23andMe doesn't really give you all that information. And then you can also use something like we use Genomic Insight by Diagnostic uh, Solutions Lab. And that's a new test they've come up with that has some great interpretation reports for you. And you can take that to a functional medicine provider who can help work with you on optimizing your diet, maybe even providing some supplements that you might need. One supplement I forgot to mention was SAMI. Sometimes that can be helpful with a COMT enzyme defect, but that gets a little complicated. So if the SAMI for some reason would make things worse, then you want to stop and look at your folate and increase your folate and potentially consider a folate supplement. Supplement. So seeing a functional medicine provider can help you kind of dig through all this gene stuff, help you dig through the estrogen dominance and kind of help be a detective for you and individualize your lifestyle to support healthy genes and healthy hormones. So thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications to be notified when we um, produce more videos, which will be on Thursdays. And that would be where we'd be talking about gut health, gene health, and hormone health. So I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. I'm a functional medicine doctor and physician, doctor, physician, sorry, functional medicine, physician, family medicine doctor, registered dietitian and nutritionist. And I will be continuing to talk about gut health, gene health, and hormone health. So please consider joining us in the next video. Thanks.